There are many times in programming when the type of data that you happen to have at hand is not the sort of data you really need. Here's a simple example. It's a Ruby program that attempts to calculate the tax on a value that the user enters. Let's try it out. It prompts me to enter a value and it does not display the result that I'm looking for. Why is that? The clue is here. At the end of my program, I've put P subtotal, P in Ruby, prints and inspects. It shows the actual data of the variable. The subtotal variable here is a string. You can see that because it's enclosed in the string delimiters. And in fact, it's got a new line at the end also. So in order to do a calculation, I need it to be some sort of numeric type. Now, I need to convert that string. I want it to be a float data type. And in Ruby, I have the to underscore f method to convert to float. Let me run it again. And this time, enter a value. And this time, it does the calculation correctly. What if I wanted to display a grand total that omitted the floating point part, so I just want a full integer value? Well, I can do that in Ruby by putting this expression uh, in parentheses and appending to it a method to convert to an integer. 2 underscore i, that converts it to an integer. And let me run it again. And the end result is here 117. It's a full number because it's been converted back to an integer. So that's a, a simple example of two methods, two functions that are applied to numerical objects and string objects in Ruby to convert them to, in this case, a floating point from a string and an integer from a floating point. Each language has its own way of converting from one data type to another. Here is another example. This happens to be the C-sharp language. Now, as with many object-oriented languages, C-sharp has classes and methods that are capable of converting from one data type to another. Here, the subtotal variable has been declared as a double, that's a floating point number, but subtotal tb.text is a value, it's a string value that is entered by the user. In order to convert it to a double, I call the double class dot and then parse and I pass to it the text, the string, and it returns a double value. So that's a very convenient way of converting from a string to a double. Now, later down here, I want to display the results of my calculation. These are again doubles, so I need to convert them back to a string before I display them in a text box. In the end result, when I run it, I enter my subtotal. This is entered as a string. It gets converted to a double in my code when I click the calc tax button. Then the output is the, uh, it starts off as doubles in my code and it's converted back to a string in order to display it in my text box. Now, another thing I did in my Ruby program was I decided to display the grand total as an integer rather than as a floating point number. One way of doing that in C sharp is to cast or coerce the floating point or the double data type back to an int. And the way to do that is to delimit the expression, that's here subtotal plus tax, and to precede it with the data type that I want it to be cast to. So remember, subtotal and tax are both doubles, floating point numbers, and I want them to be coerced or cast to an int, which is a full integer data type with no floating point part. And this is the C-like syntax. You'll find a similar syntax used in many C-like languages to cast or coerce to an int. Let me compile and run it into 100 as before, calc. And this time you can see that the grand total is displayed as a full integer value with no floating point part. So that's a very simple and quick overview of some of the ways that different programming languages use to convert between different data types. Learn programming and the business of programming at www.bitwisecourses.com.